always guilty. He doesn't mind it a bit. He comes to us over and over and over and Second trip.
And, and the reason that I, I, I want to encourage you to do that has a lot to do with the fact that sometimes things that pop into our thought process, uh, we need to know the source of it. We need to you know, where did this come from? You know, have you ever done something and said, uh, done with me and you guys say something? And in my own mind, I said, well, where did that come from? Because, you know, I, many times I, I have it planned in my heart. I am not going to get upset no matter what, no matter what happens. And then, bing, bang, boom, and I'm saying something that was because I was upset. Yes. And I didn't intend to get upset. And, and uh, I don't believe that Satan can put things, put thoughts in your mind. I don't believe that. Unless he has legal recourse to do so because of some sin or something in your life that you're carrying around that gives him the legal right to interfere with you. Now, uh, I'm sure that if... You know, if, if the devil could, he would lie to all of us and keep us from ever going to an altar of salvation in the first place. If he could do that. But he can, if, if he has that legal right, he can bring you, because, and we pointed this out last week, when, when the devil tempted Jesus, he spoke to him. It was not a mental exercise. It was not an emotional process that was used through his psyche. This was spoken word. Jesus also responded back to the devil in spoken word. And that's very important. So, what can we learn about the devil and his, his peculiar or his, his individual abilities or maybe his attributes? Number one, Satan can speak in an audible voice. Satan can speak in an audible voice. We also see, because of verse 5, that he could move Jesus from one place to another place physically. Yeah, I wonder about that one. He took him to... Jerusalem and set him down on one of the pinnacles of the temple. Now, it's just, and, and no matter where I looked, no matter how much studying I did, there was no, because remember the Holy Spirit moved Jesus from the water baptism, and John's baptism, into the wilderness. He, but he led him there. He, he, he directed him there. He, 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 he it wasn't like he physically translated it. Could have happened that way, but as we get into some of the other verses in some of the other places, we will need to look at that again. But um, one of the things that jumped off the page of me was how knowledgeable, how knowledgeable the devil was about scripture, about scripture and about the nature of God. You know, he's given his angels charge over them. See, he, he's knowledgeable. He, he, remember, he was, a, he was a fallen angel. Just because he was a fallen angel doesn't mean he automatically was stripped of all of his knowledge and understanding or abilities that he had when he was, a, well, was an angel. But the thing that I wanted to touch on, most important to me anyway, is when the devil tempts, he usually does it with questions. Doubt. Doubt. Get you to stop and, and, and go over things so many times that you become confused. Did God really say I was delivered? I still have the pain, I must not be delivered. Right? That's just the way he works. And another, he, this is how Lucifer, the devil, the tempter, this is how he attacked Jesus himself. 
So isn't he going to be at least that treacherous with us? Because I'm, I'm sure the devil thinks that he can manipulate most people any time he wants, any way he wants. I'm sure, I'm sure that the, the Word of God refers to him as the prince of the power of the air. And he's all around us. Is that the lots of good practice? Lots of centuries of practice. And, and since we know that God doesn't measure time the way we measure time, we don't know about, the, about those eons of what we call time that, that was, they're, 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 not, they're not understandable, comprehensible to us. Now, as Jesus is sitting on the pinnacle of the temple, at this point, Jesus is still observing his facts. Remember that, he's still observing his facts. So in this questioning, he goes back to this first question. You know, if you're the Son of God, you can turn stones to bread. Now he's saying, well, if you're the Son of God, the angel will take care of you. You can jump off this pinnacle and you won't be harmed. You know, like he knew that God had already given Jesus protection. And he knew that God, he knew that Jesus was fully man as well. And that's all. <laughs> he, he knew that the body that Jesus was in could be destroyed just like my body or your body if you fell from that tent. Yeah. This is again some of his tactics that he uses against us. He repeats things over and over and over because the more he keeps repeating the same things, the more likely we are to find a level of doubt. And it only takes a little bit of doubt until that mushroom and grow on it. Now, doubt is also described in the scripture in, 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 in more than one way. Now, the devil would have you believe that any doubt is sin. But I will convince you that doubting itself is not sin. Doubting itself is not sin. It's what you do with the doubt. It's the behavior. It's the behavior. It's the attitude. It's the voice. And talking is behavior. Oh, oh yeah, talking is verbal behavior. Yeah, thank you. I, I forgot that. Yes, that's right. It is. The, man. My wife drove that in me when she got in psychology. <laughs> well, I think she did. Oh, I know. <laughs> I think she needs to drill that into me now. I, I can use more of that. We well, just be a little bit more careful. Yeah, because my, my biggest battles are over something I say. I have to deal with, with what I say. Now, what Jesus was, I mean, what Satan was trying to do to Jesus was to get Jesus to begin to doubt. Begin to doubt. How is it when he was weak by fasting, he's strong? Well, you know, I keep reading that place in the scripture that it says he's leaning more on God than ever before, even for his substance. I, I, he's leaning on God 100%, he, not holding anything back. Is that it? He, yeah, he's not dependent on the, the, the various on the body. Yeah. He's not dependent on the water falling from the sky. He's just depending on God. And he's letting the Holy Spirit lead him. Uh -huh. He's not just doing it in his own strength as a man. He's letting the Holy Spirit through him. He used to say in football, he leaves it all on the field. Yeah, yeah. He's not holding anything down. Not holding anything to put down. He says, cast yourself down, Jesus. You will not be hurt, for God has his angels guarding you. And again, the enemy uses God's own words against Jesus. And he does it against us, too. Uh, we're, all of us, doesn't matter how long we've been a Christian, doesn't matter what levels of spirituality we've reached to, if there is such a thing as levels, if it, it, it even exists, but Satan never really knows where you stand before God. He's not a part of the audience anymore. Remember when he went against Job? He had to go before God, 
God had given permission to go against him. But in, in, a, in a small way, Satan was a part of the audience when they were considering Job. But when Jesus died on the cross, there was this appearance of Jesus where he took away from Satan some keys. What were those keys? The keys to death and the keys to hell. He took those keys away from the prince of the king and the power of Jesus did. Now, this is happening before, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping way ahead, but the reason I'm, is I want to show you that Satan does not have as much power as we attribute him to have. He doesn't. And, and, and I've told, I told some folks this before. Uh, If I'm praying out loud and I'm praying in a, in a known tongue, then Satan can hear what I pray. If he has that legal right to be in the, you know, if I have that, you know, when, when you start praying, you should pray that your prayer closet is totally inaccessible to the enemy or his demons. Satan. Sanctify. I love that word. Put a Put a head there. Put a head there. But when we pray in the Holy Ghost, that prayer language is between the Holy Ghost in us, through us, right to God. And Satan is not a part of the Trinity. He's not a part of that. That prayer is, I call it, perfected. Right. And, I, I, and I know that I, doctrinally I don't have a lady stand on there. That's just what Brother Bill calls it. I call it perfected prayer. And I can, I can, the Lord will be, I have a burden. You know, I don't always know what the burden's about. I don't always know who I'm praying for, who I'm interceding for. But I can tell you this, when I have been praying in the Spirit, that burden suddenly doesn't become a burden anymore. And that peace, peace, oh, that unimaginable peace just settles into your soul, into your mind. And you know, because the burden has been handed over. <laughs> it's not mine, Lord. It's yours. And there is no such thing as a burden to the Lord. <laughs> so my burden has turned into a victory. It's turned into a victory. Uh, one of the things that the devil often does is he misquotes scripture mm -hmm. or he only quotes a portion of the scripture. Out of context, yeah. It's, 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 it's like the one that I hear, I haven't heard a lot in the last few weeks, but for a long, long time now, I've had people, especially online, on Facebook, and you know the, the uh, yeah. judge not, and that's when they stop the quote. <laughs> yeah, they are misrepresenting a portion of God's word. You can't dissect God's word to suit your attitude or your emotions. Judge not, lest thou be judged. Which doesn't say not to judge. It says. Only be willing to judge at the level you're willing to live with when it comes back on. In other words, keep your own side of the street clean. Yeah. Keep your own side of the street clean. <laughs> and, 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 then, and then, too, think about that. Isn't that more a statement of compassion than anything else? Because if I, if, I, if I don't overly burden you with some image or idea of some burden, uh, that's compassion. I said, no, I, I don't want to carry that problem. I don't want to carry that load that my brother, my sister's carrying. So I'm not going to judge them as a failure. I'm not going to judge them as weak or stupid. You know, sometimes people do things that for the life of me, I can't understand why they do. But sometimes, even when we know better, 
we do things we shouldn't do. But I'm not talking necessarily about sin. You know, I've been, all my life, I've been one of these people. I, I, get, I get these desires to have a different car, a different color. <laughs> and over the last few years, God's helped me a lot. A lot. But I was sitting the other morning. I, 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 I see whose birthday it is. I wish him a blessed birthday on Facebook. Everyone make sure that all my friends know that I'm thinking about it. But I've got my machine set up to tell me that. So it, it's just, but it's, it's a mechanical thing. And I'm sitting there, and I, I've already wished everybody a blessed birthday, and I've gone on to something else. And I'm looking at motorboats and pricing out motorboats. Well, I'm, I'm a Craigslist guru. I'm a Craigslist. Oh, that's a good price. Good price. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and 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 so I know better than to go into debt. I know better than to do certain things. But the Lord has helped me to conquer that. But I still find that that my nature kind of still leans in that direction a lot. I can, I can sit for an hour and figure out, well, if I've got a class A motorhome, then I would need this. To, uh, I can call Nancy's car behind us so we have a car we got to go in, and blah, blah, blah. And, and so, and Nancy told me the other day, she said, you know, i got to have some place to do my quilting. And so I've been, I've been checking off some of these things and throwing them out simply because they had no place for Nancy to quilt. I don't think there's any sin in that, folks, but it just, it, it's revealing to me that that nature still needs to be dealt with. Oh, yeah, you mean my brain down Not only that, but how much time I was spent working on that that could have been used for something else. And, 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 and yeah, and I've had to ask the Lord to forgive me for things like that. Um, but it, it all starts with that, that idea of, you know, this question coming up, well, what would we do if? What if? And uh, and that's that's really what Satan was throwing at Jesus. Well, what if you threw yourself off the table? God's already promised he's going to take care of you. I guess Satan wasn't willing to think about that other place in the scripture where it says, don't tempt the Lord thy God. Several times in the Bible, the same thing was said, like when Jesus uh, told him to ca cast the stone, but then he was guilty to cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. It's a similar situation. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can't, if you're sinning, you can't be through it. Or the guy with the, the, the log in his eye, you know. Mm -hmm. These, these, the, and as we go through all the words of Jesus, we're going to cover this over yeah. and over and over and over. He said, the, the, the oldest left first, because they had the most sins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those older guys, they've been around long enough. They had more time to look at him. And those older guys really didn't know better. They, yeah. they really did know better. And they were just, they were just going with the flow. Mm -hmm. uh, so we learn from this that Satan uses God's word against us, but it tells us that Satan already knew that Jesus was the Son of God. No doubt that he knew it. Because he said, you know, God give his angels charge over you. Now, Jesus responds with Matthew 4, 7. Matthew 4, 7. Is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Think about it. You just not. You just can't. It is written over and over. We're going to learn that Jesus quotes to the enemy the words of God. See, I don't have to stand up and fight. The enemy just on what I know or what I've learned or what I've experienced. I can fight him with the words of God Almighty. And uh, by the way, when God says it, that settles it. 
We don't read anything in any historical record, any biblical historical record. We don't read anywhere where Satan was able to refuse leaving the presence of God when, as Lucifer, he was kicked out with a third of the, the, the angels. There, there was no rebellion. They didn't try to take over the kingdom. They didn't try to do a, cu a, a coup. They didn't have the power or the authority to resist God's words. And we're going to cover this again and again. That's good. One of the things he says, Jesus says, he, and the way he says it, he redirects his focus away from his fasting, fasting, hungry, fasting body. He, re, he directs it away from what he might need at the particular time. And he refers it Godward. Godward. By every word, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. I'm not going to do anything that would cause my father to even raise an eyebrow. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And I believe that as we learn to respond to not just the devil, but as we learn to respond to each other, and as we learn to respond to the lost, with the Word of God, will be more efficient in the winning of souls and in the encouraging of the saints. Sometimes if it wasn't for what the Word said, I'd give up. But the Word says, to him that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. And sometimes enduring is hard. Think about Jesus. He's, he's been all this time fasting. And instead of having a banquet brought to him, or even a cup of cool water, what happens? He, he, he's there in, the, in, the, in another place of tempting. From a place of hunger to a place of, 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 of proving that God is who God says he is. What I find interesting about the three ways in which Satan tempted him the first and the last had something to offer Jesus. Some tangible thing. Food, power. But that middle one has always confused me. Why he would tempt Jesus to jump off the pinnacle of the temple. What, what did Jesus have to gain by doing that? Well, I don't think really Jesus had anything to gain. Well, I was looking look at the proof that physical proof is that here you can prove yourself. Yeah. So he was testing Jesus' faith in his father? And yes. Don't live by faith in what your father has asked you to do. Make sure that you got some facts to back it up. And make sure your father, father proves it. Yeah. What he was. Let's, let, let's make God prove who he is. Hmm. Okay. So, so often in modern Christianity, and I'm talking about our generation, the now, People want all these facts to back up everything. They want all this evidence to back up. They can't just believe that God said it and that's enough. And we, now we all struggle with that some, right? We all do. But we're, we're, seeing, we're seeing an entire generation now. If not the one that's here now, the one, the, the second one, the, they have discounted the word of God to the point that their mantra is, well, man, men wrote it, so we don't have to obey it, yeah. or we don't have to believe it. And that's that is that is the common theme that goes on today. Now, uh, one of the things that I get from this is to Jesus, it was more important for him to be obedient to God than it was to even entertain the devil's temptation. Obedience was the key. It still is. And it is. It never will, it never stops. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Someone once said something being is stuck in my brain. Obedience is not an option. <laughs> it's not. It's either obedience or you're a sinner. I mean, really? Yes. And 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 so and the idea of obedience. Satan takes the idea of obedience and he manipulates it and tries to turn it into some level of legalism. 
that mankind has never been able to live fully up to a legalistic system. Paul talks about that a lot in Romans. Paul, Paul the law doesn't save you. It only points out your fault. That's right. Paul <laughs> does a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, he was. All it does. Paul, all it does is show you where you went wrong. It, it makes you aware of sin. That's all it does. Now, the next temptation, uh, the tempter once again moved Jesus to a place of great splendor, a lofty place with panoramic views, the finest that nature has to offer. All the kingdoms of the world and their majesty, majesty is in view. Uh, verse 8 is where that starts in. Again, the devil taketh him up into exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kings of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto Jesus, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. So here in this third temptation is where the enemy finally reveals his true goal mm -hmm. in tempting Jesus. I think Jesus had to try and chuckle when he did that. Because he did <laughs> Well, I think, I, I think we, 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 we have to keep, yes, Kathy, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to keep in mind that as Jesus wants to be obedient to the Father, Things of this world were not that important to him. We put so much, we, we spend most of our lives trying to get things, substance. I was, I was, a lot of, a lot of mornings I, I have some old, uh, uh, some old, old, uh, Appalachian music, uh, some some would call it in bluegrass, and uh, so I I'll, I'll put that on and let it play real soft in the background while I'm doing some other things on my computer. And a song that I hadn't heard for a long long time that just jumped out at me, and the song was "You'll Never See a U-Haul Pull Behind yeah, the Hearse." Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that was a whole song. Heard people say that. No, that, that, that was a whole song. I don't know who wrote it. Some of it came after the same. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's one of those things that it might be a little bit comical, but there's a real truth in it. Because you can't take it with you when you go. But, so, so Jesus was, again, showing us a, a part of the blueprint for our life. Don't become overly absorbed in the natural. In the beauty or the glory or the, uh, uh, you know, a, a lot of preachers, they're more interested in their, uh, in their standing. Maybe the word prominent? Yeah, that could, that, could, that could be put in there without any difficulty at all. Uh, we all need to have food. We all need to have, you know, and what do we say? Having food and raiment there with the content. Well, Brother Bill Sanders hadn't figured that out yet. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's, that, that's, you know, and I, I know. But Jesus is trying to show us something here. He's trying to put it in perspective here. Uh, I'm sure that he could have kind of looked over at, at, at the enemy and winked and said, Why are you trying to give me something that ain't even yours? <laughs> I know, I was thinking, why didn't he say the earth is the Lord's and the holders thereof? Yeah. He, he, he wanted Jesus to simply stop trusting God. Stop obeying God. Uh, stop obeying, stop trusting, stop believing, and also stop living to please God. Please yourself. Absolutely. Say, I'll say what I'm here to do. Just stop being the son of God. 
Just stop being true and loyal to your father. I don't know how God's going to bring everything to pass. I don't. But I know that if I'll stay in the center of His will, it'll work out according to that plan. And Bill Sanders, whether Bill Sanders is happy or not, doesn't make a bit of difference. Does it? It couldn't. But if I'm in the center of God's will and something bad happens to me, I mean, a bunch of bad things happen to me, but then I stand before God on judgment day and he said, well done, Bill. Come on in here. I got something for you to do in my eternal kingdom. Amen. And you're not going to have to negotiate for a salary or a defense or none of that stuff. We'll be one with God in every way possible. My, my brain just don't work in that area. Oh, I, I got a good imagination, but eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it given into the hearts of men what God has prepared for them that love Him. Woo! Shout time and glory. Shout time and glory. Glory. It's my neighbor. The, the devil offered to Jesus the world. That's a bad Worship me, and I will give it all to you. The world, the beauty, the provision, the glory. The devil didn't even own what he was offering. What's the difference between God's ownership and our ownership? The devil's ownership. Yeah, what's the difference? Well, for one, Satan was kicked out of heaven. Satan was kicked out of heaven. And for two, we've been adopted into the, to the family of God, so we're here to join heirs with Him. We're, we're brought in through adoption. We're the creation of the Creator. Uh, the only, only badge of ownership that I call the ultimate badge of ownership or the ultimate title of ownership is creation. If you didn't create it, you don't really own it. I don't, I, the devil was created too. Yeah, that's just it. But the devil didn't create any of that stuff. No, he didn't. So he didn't have any title of deed of ownership. Absolutely. I got a title of deed to my house, but I don't own it. I don't. Because if I don't pay the taxes, the government will take it. So that's not ownership. I'm just leasing it. It's, 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 it's a share of lease. So it is. We don't ever own this land. Our government will not allow us to own it. Look at what they did to the American Indians. Now the American Indians can claim ownership of their tribal lands, but there's always a battle over that. <laughs> yeah. I think I can see those in the <laughs> Uh, so they're doing all right, some of them. <laughs> See, the devil didn't create the world. All the devil creates is doubt and fear. Chaos. Chaos. Lies. Uncertainty. The devil is a liar and the truth is not in him. And I, I preach about that a lot because I have to be reminded. And I'll tell you something else. The devil is not in control of this world. He's not. And so that tells me that Satan, even Jesus' response, uh, the devil is not worthy to be worshipped. You know, I think worship is one of the greatest privileges I have as, as a child of God. Because I can worship the Lord anytime, any place, and I don't even have to have a reason. 
If you have to have a reason to worship the Lord, you still got some growing to do. You still got some maturing to do. And that's okay, because we all have to get there in the way that the path of the Lord has for us. But, oh, church, to be able to worship the Lord, you know, I, I, I can be sitting out in the parking lot waiting for Sister Nancy to come out of the Hobby Lobby, and, and I, can have, I can worship the Lord there. It can be hot, it can be cold, it can, it, I, I can be hurt, I can be happy, it doesn't matter. Anytime my soul wants to worship God, He wants to receive it. And He delights in the worship of His people. Oh, I love to worship the Lord. You have two, two minutes to finish verse 10. You have to get through verse 10. <laughs> okay. Then, then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and Him only shalt thou serve. Amen. 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 He actually delineates the difference between worshiping and serving. And He says, They go together. Mm -hmm. When you guys get those instruments out, and you, you're serving the Lord, and you're worshiping the Lord all at the same time, and letting the glory of God flow through the strings of that instrument, and through our voices, as we just exalt and love him and appreciate and, and just 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 be what we do. And, and, and then in verse 11, then the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. Yeah. Satan didn't have the power to say no when Jesus said, get thee. Greater is he that's within you than he that's in the world. I have kicked that door open and propped it open, and I have, I have evicted Satan and his nonsense and his groovy and his his ideology. And I want to say this respectfully. I, I believe in religion. But I also know that Satan has his own religion, and all of us have our own religion, but sometimes our religion needs to get evicted. So we can stand in the presence of God in true worship and adoration. Well, did I do it, Sister Nancy? You did it. All right. All right. Thank you for the reminder. Praise the Lord. We're, we're, we're sneaking up on the Beatitudes of the Sermon on the Mount. Now we're going to be there a while. You talk about good and rich and good and the Word of God. You notice how the Lord. Every time he's talking, it's like he's quoting. Every time he says it is written, he's quoting scripture. Yes, every time. Every time. Here's the word, baby. <laughs> Here's what it says. You can think with you can think you think who you are. And, and he's doing that because he's saying so it's not coming from him, Jesus the man. It's coming from his father. His word. The word. It's built it's from the Bible. It's not something I'm making up. It's not built upon a